destroyer of worlds. In the film Oppenheimer by Christopher Nolan, President Truman refers to J. Robert Oppenheimer as a crybaby, which seems almost too petty to be based in truth. When retelling a true narrative, biopics must walk a narrow line. This is especially true if they address serious and challenging subjects. When determining which parts of the story get nuance and which don't, filmmakers must exercise caution. When contrasted to history, the movie is made even more intriguing by the way Oppenheimer handles this balancing, particularly during their heated confrontation with President Truman. Oppenheimer tells the story of the titular theoretical physicist, who was pivotal in the development of the first nuclear weapons during World War II. While Oppenheimer's timeline alternates between the physicist's school years, his work at Los Alamos, and his later security hearings, it also includes an emotionally charged scene after atomic bombs are dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In this scene, Oppenheimer meets with President Truman to urge restraint when developing such weapons. However, the meeting doesn't go well, and Truman calls Oppenheimer a crybaby, before forbidding him from returning to the White House. The on-screen argument between Oppenheimer and President Truman may leave viewers wondering if Nolan fabricated this volatile exchange or if it actually happened in real life. Technically, Truman's response to Oppenheimer is accurate to history. However, events unfolded differently than in the film. In reality, Truman did refer to Oppenheimer as a crybaby scientist, but this was not said directly to his face, nor was it in reference to barring him from the White House. According to Ray Monk's Robert Oppenheimer, A Life Inside the Center, President Truman privately described Oppenheimer as a crybaby scientist to his aides. He later told Dean Acheson, his Secretary of State, that he didn't want to see the physicist in his office ever again. Why President Truman didn't like Robert Oppenheimer? In the end, Oppenheimer accurately portrays how Truman rejected Oppenheimer's advice. In Monk's biography, Truman is quoted as replying, Blood on his hands, damn it. He hasn't half as much blood on his hands as I have. In response to Oppenheimer's remark about having blood on his hands, you simply don't whine about it all the time. As the film illustrates, Oppenheimer's response to the bomb's destruction was viewed by Truman as a display of weakness, especially after the harm had already been done. It's impossible to say if Oppenheimer's remarks made the president feel guilty, but it's likely that they did. Despite the absence of family viewpoints, Oppenheimer's conclusion reflects the physicist's feelings about his work on the atomic bomb. Additionally, the Oppenheimer family provided more information regarding Truman's reaction to the scientist. Charles Oppenheimer, his grandson, said of him, he didn't convince the president and the president unfortunately didn't like him. The president ignored the wise counsel that my grandfather offered. Truman obviously didn't appreciate what he said about having blood on his hands, according to the Washington Post. Despite the absence of family viewpoints, Oppenheimer's conclusion reflects the physicist's feelings about his work on the atomic bomb.